Hello everyone and welcome back to Ruby Lessons on Code Academy. So in the last lesson we looked at hashes which are kind of like dictionaries in other programming languages. Today we're going to be including a bit of iteration with hashes. So if you don't know or don't remember what iteration is I would recommend watching some of my older videos on Ruby or even Python. I believe we've done iteration in Python as well. So let's get started. Uh, so do you remember when we covered loops and iterators? If you don't, you can also click this link. If you don't want to watch my videos, you can just go through the Code Academy lessons. So we could use a whole bunch of different methods for looping in a program. As we covered, we have while, we have the for loop, we have uh, dot each, and all of those. Uh, when we loop over an array or a hash, we say that we iterate over it. We'll be using the dot each iterator to iterate over arrays and hashes in this section. So take a look at the code in the editor to see one example of how we might go about this. Okay, so that's all we need to do. Let's see. So we have a list, or uh, I don't. I'm going to call it list. I don't exactly remember what it's called in Ruby. Sorry. So it's this. We have this list which is called friends. Contains four strings. We have Milhouse, Ralph, Nelson, and Otto. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing anything. Uh, then we have a hash which is family, we have Homer, who is the dad, we have Marge, who is mom, Lisa, who is the sister, Maggie, again sister, and so on. Then we use the dot each method to iterate. So we have this list, and we iterate through it using this, and we also have this hash, and we iterate through it using this. So here we are using x as our variable, and then we are outputting whatever x is, and in this case x is going to be equal to any string in here. So it's going to go through each, sting, uh, each string separately and then puts that to our console. So then we also have family, but here we have two variables. So we output x, which is going to be the key, and we also have the value that's contained by that key, or y, which is going to be, for example, if we have Homer, we have dad. So let's see if I was correct or if we were correct in saying what we said. And yes, we were. So we have the list is printed out like this. And then we have the hash, which is printed out slightly differently. We have the key with its value. So let's move on and see how we can do this ourselves, hopefully. Iterating over arrays. Oh, that was it. Arrays, not lists. So iterating over arrays looks like this. So we have the array. And then we have dot each where uh, we use pipe and in between the pipes we have the element that we're using as our variable to iterate through everything and puts element is just puts each of the elements that are contained in this list separately so in the example above we create an array called numbers with five elements one through five in this case then we say take this array and for each element print it to the console which is what this does as usual, we can use any placeholder name for the bit between the two pipe characters. So our instructions use the dot each iterator to puts out each element of the languages array. Make sure to use puts instead of print, so each element is on its own line. Now they realize that that looks much better, finally. Uh, so we have languages dot each, we have the, uh, the bracket, the curly braces, I'm pretty sure that you can also do do and end, if I am correct, if you really wanted to do it like that, you can, so then we have the pipe, I will use x in this case, because I see, I think that that's going to be quite convenient anyway, puts x, and I will delete the extra spaces that I have and lines there, uh, what's up with the spaces after that, I have no idea, whatever, there we go. So as you can see, you can use either curly braces or do end, as we have covered previously. And we get the result that we were expecting. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Python, Ruby. I don't know why they put Ruby at the end. Maybe to give it more of a remembering, remembrance factor? I don't even know. But okay, that doesn't really matter. Moving on. Iterating over multidimensional arrays. So I'm pretty sure that we covered multidimensional arrays in a previous video. But just as a reminder, a multidimensional array is an array which contains more arrays, which can even contain extra arrays. So you can have a two-dimensional array, 
is an array which contains array, arrays of elements. A three-dimensional array would be an array that contains arrays of arrays which contain elements. Now hopefully that makes sense. Just think about it, write it down, and you'll see. It will make sense after a while. Uh, if it doesn't, do feel free to ask in the comments as I've said many times before. Iterating over the, the multi-dimensional arrays then. So how do we do it? Because if you only iterate through the first array, then you're only getting the arrays, you're not getting the separate elements. And we, that's not really what we want as our result. So we have created a two-dimensional uh, two array, S, by the name of S, or sandwiches apparently, okay, whatever. We want to iterate over S in such a way that we don't print out each element like ham Swiss, so without we don't want the cur the square brackets in there, but each element within each we want each element within each element. So we get the list of all the meats and cheeses within S. So basically, what I understand is get just get rid of these square brackets that are in here. If we just wanted to access Swiss, we could type S01, and let's see what that does. So we have we're accessing the S. We're accessing the 0th element of S, which is the very first in this case. So we're accessing this array. And then uh, of that array, we're accessing the second element, the first element. So that's going to give us Swiss. So we are accessing the 0th element of S, and then we're accessing the first element of that element. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, write it out if it doesn't. Sometimes writing things out makes... Uh, makes it clearer. So this means bring me the second element of the first element, which is Swiss. If we iterate over a regular array using array.each and like we did in the previous lesson, so like we did uh, just there, then we uh, then how might we iterate over an array of arrays? So you can iterate through... okay so let's see what the, the instructions say. So you can if you know the answer, then that's good. You're thinking. Uh, so our instructions then are puts out every element inside the subarrays inside S. So separately, without the square brackets. Iterate through dot each element in the S array. Call them elem call the elements subarray. So the first elements dot each. I will be using curly braces in this case because I already showed that you can use do end. Uh, so we want pipe, and we want to call it subarray. Good. Then iterate through dot each subarray and puts out their items. So we have an each inside of an each. So we have subarray dot each. And again, we nest the dot each inside of the other dot each. And this is where indentation makes things clearer. Even though you don't have to do it, it just makes things clearer. You know what's going on where. And then inside of here, what do we need to call this? We need to call it... Uh, okay, item, I guess. And puts item. Send submit code. And as you can see, we get each of these strings printed out on a separate line. And in this case, uh, we're doing that using the variable item. So hopefully this makes sense. I know it's kind of difficult to get your head around at first because you're working in multiple dimensions and that can get quite complicated. So what would you do... Okay, I'm just going to extend this slightly. What would you do if you had a three-dimensional array? So you had another array in here. Just imagine, I'm not going to actually write it out because that would take too much time and space. Uh, so, in that case, you could also do, so here you have, let's call this item 1, you would also add another line which was, say, item 1 dot each, again, nesting another each inside of our previous each, and here you would do puts, oops, I need to actually uh, name something, so, item 2, and that is not how you spell item, item 2 puts item 2. In this case, this is actually going to print all of the letters separately. Or maybe not. I guess e dot each doesn't work for strings. Uh, okay, 
So yeah, imagine you had a three-dimensional array. This would print each element of the third level separate on a separate line. So hopefully that m makes more sense now. Let's just go back to the place where we can actually say and submit and move on. Oop. Puts item. There we go. And moving on. Iterating over hashes. So that was how you iterate over multidimensional arrays. Now how do we do it using hashes? We kind of saw how to do it in the very at the very start of this lesson, but let's try it for ourselves. So when iterating over hashes, we need two placeholder variables to represent each key value pair. So you have the key, which unlocks the pair, or as I like to call it, the value contained. Or, well, it is the value, okay, never mind. Uh, I like to call that the value is unlocked by the key. I think it represents it quite nicely. So in the example above, we create a new hash called restaurant menu. So we have noodles cost 4 currency, soup cost 3 currency, salad cost 2 currency. Whatever that currency is, it doesn't really matter. Then we loop through the restaurant menu hash and assign the key to item and the value to price for each iteration. So as you can see, we go restaurant dot underscore menu dot each, so we're calling the each method on it, do, so open curly brace, close curly brace for the end. We're calling uh, the first element, so the key item, and we're calling the second element or the value price. And then we can put item and price with a colon in between. Remember that anything you put in uh, as a string in, with a pound symbol and curly braces comes out as the variable itself, not as literally item. So finally, we put out all of this. So this is what you would actually get as output on the console over here. Instructions use dot each to iterate over the secret identities hash, okay? Uh, identities dot each. Um, and also you don't actually have to have a specific name for what you call this variable in here. You can call it this if you really wanted to, but it's better to call it something that makes sense. So in this case, I'm go going to call it name, comma, so the comma just separates the two values as you see here, there's a comma, you have item and then price, which are two var different variables, and they have uh, identity. That's what I'm going to call it anyway. You, you don't have to call it the same, you can just call it one and two if you really wanted to, uh, but as a string, so you can't, I don't think that you can just call it like uh, that. That won't work. Now that we have those, we want to put, there are a few ways that you can put it, you can just literally do name, comma, identity, and that's what I think, I think that's going to just separate them with a space in between, as you can see, or maybe not see, okay, um, but yeah, the best way is to just do it like it does it here, with the pound symbol, and that is not the pound symbol, that is the tilde symbol. And there we go. Okay, uh, I guess that's not supposed to be a comma, that's supposed to be a colon, of course. Good, so now we have done it. We have the Batman, Bruce Wayne, Superman, Clark Kent, Wonder Woman, Diana Prince, Freakazoid, sorry I've never heard of that, uh, Dexter Douglas. Good, so now we've covered that. So if you have any questions about this lesson or any of the other lessons, do feel free to ask in the comments down below. I will answer them as soon as possible, of course, as I've said many times before. Uh, but other than that, if you enjoyed watching this video, if you learned something new, please give me a like, share and subscribe. If you didn't, then give me a dislike and tell me how I can improve next time so that you enjoy the video more. But until that next time, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.